Hello everyone and welcome back to the coverage of the World Blitz Championship. It's the ending everyone requested for and it is what the chess world deserves. After uh, Carlson won the game against Alireza Firoja, everyone said that it would be a shame if Magnus just wins the tournament uh, straight away. Uh, but Magnus drew his last two games. Uh, he drew against... Uh, uh, he drew against Alexander Grishuk in the penultimate round, and then in the final round, uh, Carlsen drew against uh, uh, Yu Yangi, and Hikaru was able to defeat uh, two of his opponents, Alexander Zubov, uh, and uh, in the final round, he defeated Rauf Mamedov, uh, catching up to Magnus. So both of them with 16 and a half points now go into tie breaks. Uh, two of the Blitz games uh, are about to be played, and if uh, they are drawn, then they go into Armageddon. So first uh, uh, first game, Nakamura had the white pieces. Uh, Carlsen went for the Berlin defense, and that game ended in a draw but it was it was a it was a it was a it was an insane game for a three minute game really uh and uh, and the berlin defense uh, surely uh was uh, carlson's world chess championship preparation and uh in the end nakamura was able to draw and this is a game two of their match of their tie breaks match so without further ado with the white pieces carlson opens with d4 now we have knight to f6, knight to f3, we have d5, and again bishop to f4, Magnus goes for the London system. If it's good enough uh, to take down Vladimir Kramnik, uh, why not use it against uh, Hikaru Nakamura? We have c5, uh, uh, Nakamura goes for the, for the same line as Kramnik, we have e3, uh, e6, and knight b to d2. Uh, bishop to d6, uh, offering a trade of dark square bishops, Magnus captures, 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 and now uh, to take uh, Nakamura out of the book, d captures on c5. Only one game uh, in the database has this move, so why not use it against uh, Hikaru in a, in a uh, three minute game. We have queen captures on c5, and now c4. Uh, uh, there is one game in the database, uh, the one we're talking about where knight to c6 was played, but here we have uh, bush, uh, d captures on c4, and this is a new move. So already as of move 8, we have a completely new game. So uh, Magnus continues to develop uh, while developing pieces. Uh, bishop captures on c4, we have rook, uh, castles by Hikaru and rook to c1 now, threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries. Queen back to e7 by Nakamura, and now Magnus just castles. We have b6, uh, preparing to fianca to the bishop here, to this beautiful diagonal. We have queen to e2, uh, preparing to trade it off with bishop to a6. Bishop to b7, and now rook f to d1. So, putting both rooks on the open files, and Nakamura still has to finish his development. Knight bd7, and now bishop to a6, going after this light square bishop. Nakamura forces the trade with knight to c5, uh, and here Magnus trades. Bishop captures, queen captures, now the queen occupies the diagonal and knight the e5 by Magnus. An excellent square for the knight, and Hikaru, of course, immediately wants to kick it away. Knight c to d7. And now uh, uh, comes a, a very important moment in the game. Uh, Magnus plays uh, queen to f3. He offers a queen trade because the queen on b7 is undefended. You have to either trade or move the queen. And uh, Nakamura does not want to play this position against Magnus. It, it's an equal, equal position. Uh, one thing that's different is that black has this b pawn pushed, so uh, the c6 square is a bit weakened. But uh, yeah, Nakamura d does not see this uh, uh, interesting at all to play against Magnus. So queen to a6 goes after the a2 pawn, and here Magnus goes knight to c6. And it's an incredible square for the knight, even at the price of the a2 pawn, because it covers all of the squares uh, that Nakamura can use to activate his rooks. You cannot go to c8 because of knight e7 check picking up the rook. So here uh, you could go for queen captures on a8, but first Nakamura wants to get rid of this uh, knight to e7 idea, so king to h8 first, and now knight to c4 by Magnus. Now Magnus will put the other knight to d6, and then Magnus will have two monster knights, something uh, you don't see very often. So queen captures on a2 by Nakamura, and now, uh, before going for this d6 outpost, first g4. Uh, Ma Magnus wants to uh, 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 kick away the knight from f6 and then go knight to d6 and then put some pressure on f7 as both the knight and the queen will control f7. So here uh, h6 doesn't really do anything for you because just g5 and you cannot capture. If you capture queen h3, check king g8 and the knight e7 is mate. So not, not possible. Uh, so after g4, Nakamura goes knight to c5, clears the d, d7 square for the other knight, and first knight to d6. And now uh, Carlsen's monster knights control all, all of the squares, and it is impossible to uh, activate the rooks. Uh, and here uh, Nakamura goes for knight to b3, and uh, uh, Vladimir Kramnik joined the, the commentary with Peter Leko, and he called this move uh, a desperado move. And Nakamura played 
We have uh, rook to c2, getting the rook out of the way, and now queen to a4 with a double attack on the pawn here, but also threatening some discoveries to expose the rook. So Magnus just uh, kicks it away. Uh, we have rook to c4 and now queen to a6. And now, uh, if you look at the position, uh, the two rooks are undeveloped. The knight is, well, not doing all that much here. The queen on a6, not really participating in the game. Magnus pushes g5. And here, there are problems. After the knight moves, the f7 pawn becomes weak. Uh, Nakamura has to make a move and the, the time is ticking. He played knight to d7, but now uh, Magnus uh, shifts his attention to the king side. Rook to h4. Uh, here we have knight b to c5, uh, getting the knight back into the game, uh, but this doesn't work. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning move for Magnus while I give you a couple of seconds. So for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. If, you, if you've ever seen this mate, you know it. It's a mate in three. Uh, rook captures on h7 check. King captures, queen h5 check. King goes back and now knight to e7 is mate. So this is uh, how uh, the game should end. But Magnus misses this. Uh, remarkable. But even, even Magnus can miss this under, under such immense pressure. If he wins this, uh, he, he has all the three titles. World Classic Champion, Rapid Champion and Blitz Champion. Something he achieved only once in 2014. Uh, that's uh, you know that, that pretty much works, uh, works only when you talk about Magnus, uh, since it's very unlikely that someone else will achieve something like that. Uh, but okay, uh, you know you, you have to try. Knight captures on f7 instead. Magnus goes for material. Rook captures on f7, uh, and now you have to capture it. If you don't capture it, if King g8, then this is again mate. Knight e7 checkmate. So rook captures on f7, and now queen captures on f7, grabbing that, uh, grabbing that uh, material. And now, uh, well, if, if you do nothing, knight e7 followed by knight g6 is mate. So you have to play something. Queen to e2 was played by Nakamura, went for the rook here, uh, but just rook captures on d7 by Magnus. With knight captures on d7, and now queen captures on d7. So now Magnus is up a piece, uh, but we we've already seen that uh, Nakamura is perfectly able to to draw uh, draw a game uh, being a piece down like he did against Vladimir Kramnik. So rook to f8 going after the f2 pawn, but now Magnus plays the only move that uh, uh, wins for White, which is rook to f4, just blocks uh, this rook, and now the threat is rook captures, and if you trade, then captures captures, and well. Uh, Magnus is just uh, up a knight and uh, well he's, he's uh, a lot up on time so uh, Nakamura will not try uh, and hold Magnus to a draw while being uh, a piece down although this didn't happen after rook to f4 uh, Nakamura resigned and Magnus wins the world blitz championship as well. So there you have it. That's uh, that's uh, what a perfect warrior looks like. Uh, the, winning the World Classic Championship, winning the World Rapid Championship, and winning the World Blitz Championship. Something that Magnus achieved twice already in 2014 and now in 2019. And uh, yeah, just, I mean, incredible stuff. Uh, but it was it was much better that uh, they had to go into tie breaks because of what happened with with Firoja. Uh, this way, uh, Nakamura had, had the chance to, to take Magnus down. And uh, well, it was just... Uh, uh, first game he, he tried, but Magnus uh, Magnus's Berlin defense is just too solid, uh, and he even got a lot of active play from it. And now uh, here again the London system system prevails, and uh, it's hard to say will it, will it become like super popular because here Magnus just took down Nakamura and Vladimir Kramnik and a lot of other people with it, which is just uh, insane. If you ask anyone, they will tell you London system is is trash. You know you, White doesn't have anything out of the opening. But it, it's just comfortable to play, and if you're as good as Magnus, you know, you, you can uh, do anything you want with it. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it, and my short coverage of the World Rapid and Blitz Championship. Uh, I will go through all of your hashtag suggestions and uh, check out uh, some other games that uh, we, we missed. And here are the standings after 21 rounds of the World Blitz Championship. So here they are. Uh, let me just uh, improve that uh, a little bit. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, uh, Magnus Carlsen first with 16.5 points. Hikaru tied also with 16.5, but in tie breaks he lost. So, uh, Nakamura is second. And third place, Vladimir Kramnik. So, uh, the <laughs> uh, guy comes out of retirement to, to have some fun at the World Blitz Championship and takes first place. That's how strong Vladimir Kramnik is. Fourth, uh, Alexander Grishuk with 14, tied with Maxim Vashiel Lagrav also with 14. Then with 13 and a half, we have a lot of people. Alereza Firoja, uh, who got sixth place, that loss against Magnus really shook him. But here you can re really see how strong Alereza is. He won second place in the in the World Rapid Championship and sick here sixth uh, in the World Blitz Championship, 
by completely pretty much the, the only one uh, aside from Dmitry Andrekin uh, to, to really crush Magnus. Uh, and uh, yeah, I forgot to mention Magnus only lost one game in both events uh, to Dmitry Andrekin. Then Vladislav Artemiev in seventh, Yu Yang Yi, Maxim Matlakov, Yang Shishtov Duda. Uh, Dmitry Andrekin, uh, Vladimir Ferosev, Anish Giri, uh, Alexander Zubov, uh, Levon Aronian, Wang Hao, uh, Ernesto Inarkiev, uh, Peter Swidler, Boris Gelfand, also Boris the, the Ageless. Uh, we have uh, Ivan Cheparinov, uh, those are with 13 and a half. And then with 13, Dre uh, Drev Alexei, uh, Yanni Pomnishi, who really was there on top, but then in the few final rounds, uh, it went bad for him. Rauf Mamedov, uh, Saleh Salem, and Maxim Chigayev. Those are the top 25 players, as you can see, uh, all, all grandmasters. So yeah, like I said, I do hope you enjoyed the short coverage. I would like to thank uh, Gleb Kopchenkov, uh, Joseph Matsyar, uh, Hamid Mazuji, uh, Tasos Arampatsis, and uh, Kai Einar uh, uh, Turforce for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, maybe taking a day off, and then we are probably about to start the, the next big saga. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.